Alrighty, in this video we're going to be looking at the area of common 2D shapes and how to find it. It's going to be a rapid fire video where I just do a worked example for each individual type of shape. And if you need to re-watch the video, you of course can do that. So without further ado, the first shape is the rectangle, which of course is defined by having opposite sides which are equal in length and both sides that are opposite are equal in length denoted by these dashes here. Those two are equal and those two are equal. And also all angles in this quadrilateral are 90 degrees. So the formula for area of a rectangle is the length times the width. So A equals L times W. Uh, it doesn't matter which one's which because when we're multiplying two numbers together, the order doesn't matter. Three times four is the same as four times three. So the order doesn't matter. My, I'm just gonna say that this is length and this is width. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. So now I'm gonna substitute in, length is eight times the width, which is three. And I get a calculation of eight threes are 24. So 24, but I also need my units, which are centimeters. And because it's area, which is in two dimensions, we represent how much dimension in our little power on our units. So 24 centimeters squared is the answer. The next shape that we're looking at is the triangle. Now the triangle uh, in terms of its area calculation is defined by area equaling half times the base times the height. You may see this represented as base times height divided by two, or um, any other manner of representation. But the point is it's a one half or 0 0.5 times the base times the height. So these two variables here, the base and the height, I'm gonna quickly explain before I do the example. The base is one of the sides. Now it's not always the one that's flat on the ground, but in this case it is. So if I've got a measurement for a side length, that can count as the base. And relative to that base, the height is the distance from that base to the opposite point. Okay, so these two triangles have the same dimensions and should have the exact same area. Both have a base of five centimeters and both have a height from base to opposite point of six centimeters. Never in our area calculations um, are we going to be using a slant height. Okay, in our area calculations for a triangle it is always the height from the base to the point. So without further ado, I'm gonna call this B. I'm gonna call this H for height. And it's the same in both triangles. And I sub them into my formula. So area equals one half times or one half of the base, which is five times the height, which is six. So the area equals, now I have five times six is 30. 30 times a half is just 15. And again, I have centimeters because that's my units and I have squared because I'm working in two dimensions. If you're doing volume, you would use three up here to represent volume because it is a three dimensional um, unit of measurement. The next shape is the parallelogram. Now the parallelogram is a very special shape. Uh, the formula for parallelogram is A equals base times height. So like a triangle, except half as much work because we don't need to multiply by a half out the front. The base being this distance along one of the edges. Okay, it doesn't matter which one, but from that edge, you need a perpendicular height. Okay, so we don't want one of these slanted heights. We want the height from edge to edge. Okay, so if you're picking this for your base, then the distance from edge to edge will be your perpendicular height, which in this case is five. So H for the five. Sub them into your equation, A equals B, which is 10 times H, which is five. A equals 10 times five, that's gonna be 50. In this case, it's not centimeters like my other examples, it's meters squared. Notice as well, just as a quick aside, I'm not actually squaring anything. This squared is simply to remind me that I'm using two dimensions, so it's area. It is not 50 squared or anything like that. The answer is 50 meters squared. Okay, one meter squared is a meter by a meter. So a square with a meter besides. I have 50 of them to fit in this shape. The next shape is the trapezium. So the trapezium is different to a parallelogram in that it's 
we've got one and only one pair of parallel sides. The opposite sides are not parallel. If I extended them, they would eventually meet somewhere. So if you have one pair of parallel sides, so these go in the same direction, then it's a trapezium. For a trapezium, the formula is a bit more complicated. I dropped my pen. But the formula is A equals A plus B divided by two all times the height. Now, the easiest way to remember that, or rather understanding that is the easiest way to remember. So this top side here is A, this bottom side is B. Or you could reverse them B on top, A on the bottom, it doesn't matter because you're adding them together. But what we're doing is we're taking the average of them. Okay, we're shortening this one and lengthening this one by taking the average until they're the same. And then we've got a rectangle or a parallelogram. So A plus B, they're gonna be the addition of these two. We're gonna halve it so to get the average, and then we're gonna times it by how high that parallel, uh, that trapezium is. Notice there's nothing to do with slanted edges, just the top, the bottom, and the straight up and down height. So to sub in our values, I've got area equals A plus B, so six plus 14, divided by two, times by how high it is, which is four millimeters. Now, I could just put all of that in my calculator or do a little bit of mental arithmetic here. So six plus 14 is 20, 20 divided by two is 10, and 10 times four is 40. So I get 40 millimeters squared. That's my area of my trapezium. The next shape is the kite. So the kite, it has um, no parallel sides, unlike a lot of the shapes we've looked at already, but rather it has even sides. So notice the top two sides here have a dash, that means they're both even in length, and these two longer sides are also even in length. And the key feature for a kite that we're looking for if we want the area of the kite is to determine the diagonals lengths. So in this equation, uh, in this example, I've already been given those diagonals. The long diagonal from point to point is 10 centimeters and the short diagonal is six. So area equals, uh, these are called X and Y by the way. So I'm gonna call that one X, call that one Y. And it's gonna be X times Y divided by two. A straightforward formula. So the area is going to be six times 10 divided by two which is going to be area equal to six times 10 is 60, divided by two is 30 centimeters squared. So sub in your units, uh, formula substitute solve for all of these as you've been looking um, and watching. You should be following along if you have similar problems. Uh, and the final shape that we're looking at today is the circle, the circle. So I've got two examples here because circles are notoriously challenging to understand and work with. In the first example, I have a radius of my circle. So the radius being the distance from the center to the circumference or the outside perimeter of the circle. And in the second case, I have a diameter, which is the distance from side to side going through the center. Um, the first one is already set up for our calculation because we have the formula being area equals pi times the radius squared. The only thing to sub in is r in this instance. So we have pi times by the radius, which is seven squared. And I can put that all in my calculator. So I'm gonna grab it here. In my calculator, I'm going to put seven squared, or I'm gonna do first pi, which is shift, and then times 10 to the power of x, which gets me the pi symbol. Your calculator might be slightly different. Uh, I'm gonna put a, probably a picture up or something showing where to find the pi button. And then I'm going to multiply that by seven squared, which is answer 153.93804, which I'm gonna to round to two decimal places for circles. So 153.94. So area equals 153.94 meters squared. And the difference for the diameter of a circle, the formula unfortunately stays the same pi times the radius squared. But if the diameter is the whole distance across from outside or circumference to center to circumference, that's really just two radiuses put together. And so the diameter is twice as big as the radius. So if we need the radius, we can halve the distance of the diameter. 
So I'm going to write off to the side because I have a little bit of room over here. I'm going to say if D for diameter equals 24, then R is equal to 12 because it is half of the 24. So now I'm ready to sub this R equals 12 in here. So I get area equals pi times 12 squared, which again, I'm gonna get my calculator. I can't multiply by pi in my head. So I'm gonna do pi times 12 squared, which is 452.3893421. Again, by convention in maths, we'll round to two decimal places. So I get 452.39. So 452.39 area equals 452.39 meters squared. And despite that's a circle um, with a diameter, we're able to figure out by getting the radius by halving that distance, sub it into the formula, put that in your calculator and get your final answer. So that video was the finding the area of common 2D shapes. If any of them were confusing, make sure you go back and re-watch as an example. If you still have questions and you're one of my students, feel free to post in the channel description down below or send me an email uh, and I'll be happily getting back to you. So hopefully this is useful to you. See you later.